In addition to the better known speech sounds that are depicted by letters of the alphabet, spoken English also contains speech sounds known as glottal stops. Because in people who stammer, glottal stops often precipitate blocks, it's helpful if you understand what these sounds are and how they're made. The purpose of this PowerPoint is therefore a to make you aware of the existence of glottal stops so that you can easily recognize when you're making them and b to provide you with a necessary background theory to enable you to jump over glottal stops when you find yourself stammering on them. Everybody uses glottal stops and they form an intrinsic part of the English language. However, because they're very subtle sounds, most people don't realise that they're using them. In fact, they're so subtle that the English alphabet doesn't even include a symbol for them. They do, however, have a symbol in the International Phonetic Alphabet, which is a bit like a question mark, except without a dot on the bottom. Glottal stops are just one out of a number of plosive consonants. The other plosive consonants in English are p, b, t, d, k and g. Plosives derive their name from the fact that they all involve a sort of mini-explosion of air. To produce a plosive sound, first you need to press two articulators together so that they form an airtight seal, then build up some air pressure behind the seal and then as you open the two articulators the air suddenly escapes between them and makes a plosive sound. In the diagram you can see here the speaker is producing a p or a b by using his lips to form the initial airtight seal. People who stammer often find that they have particular difficulty producing words that begin with plosives including both the better known ones and also glottal stops. In the diagram on the left, you can see how we produce the plosives t and d by pressing the tip of the tongue against the hard palate to form the initial airtight seal and then letting go. In contrast, on the right, you can see how the plosives k and g are created, a bit further back in the mouth, using the body of the tongue and the soft palate to form the initial airtight seal. In contrast to other plosives, glottal stops are produced much further down the vocal tract using our vocal folds or vocal cords to form the initial airtight seal and then releasing the vocal folds to let the air burst out. In English, we often produce glottal stops before words beginning with vowels in order to make their onsets more crisp and distinctive. Words spoken in this way are sometimes described as having hard onsets. If you repeat a vowel several times in quick succession, each time with a hard onset, you will get a feel for what a glottal stop is. Listen to the word ow, first repeated without a glottal stop, and then with a glottal stop. So first without, ow, 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 ow. And then with, ow, 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 ow. Young children commonly use glottal stops too. Anyone who's watched the Teletubbies will be well acquainted with uh-oh, uh-oh, which involves two glottal stops. Glottal stops are also sometimes used together with consonants at the beginning of words to emphasise them with hard onsets. So, for example, you, why, you, why. Finally, in some colloquial forms of English, people use glottal stops in place of a T. For example, butter, butter, hat. Kitten. Hard onsets are created by closing the vocal cords to produce glottal stops, for example, uh, 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 uh. In contrast, soft onsets can be created by keeping the vocal cords open a bit so that air can pass through them. So, for example, if you repeat uh with a soft onset, it'll sound a bit like there's a silent H before it. 
If you find yourself often blocking or producing rapid repetitions on words beginning with vowels, often the problem isn't with the vowel itself, but rather it's with joining the glottal stop to the vowel. So for example, when trying to say I, you may block and produce something like I. Or if you continue to push, it could turn into a repetition I. Uh, 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 I. Similarly with the word am. Uh, am or uh, 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 am. If this happens you can use the jump to jump over the initial glottal stop. All you need to do is simply to let go and then restart gently on the vowel. To make sure that you restart gently, in other words with a soft onset, you can add a silent or imaginary H before the vowel. This will prevent you from creating another glottal stop. So for example, I am I am So to summarise, glottal stops involve closing the vocal cords together, building up air pressure behind them, then suddenly opening them to let the air out. Speakers normally use glottal stops to increase the force with which important sounds are made. Very often words that we think begin with vowel, we actually begin with glottal stops. This is especially likely to be the case if we're emphasising the word or saying it forcefully or shouting. So for example, if you shout the word I, you'll almost certainly be using a glottal stop, I. If you block at the beginning of a word beginning with a vowel, you may be having difficulty co-articulating the glottal stop with the vowel. In other words, you may be having difficulty joining the glottal stop and the vowel together. If this is the case, you can use the jump to jump over the glottal stop and get going again. Abandon the glottal stop, let go and start the vowel with a soft onset. <laughs>